it got to go back. It got to go back today. It got to go back. Yo, what's up, everybody? It is your boy, Brandon. Yo, before I take this camera back today, I had to stop and give my honest opinion from using it for a few days, about five, six days. I gotta give you guys my honest opinion, all right? Um, I've seen tons of videos about the ZVE-1. Tons of video on, uh, on YouTube and everywhere else, all right? I'm gonna try to cut this down as most, but I want you guys to really watch this before you consider buying the ZVE-1. Now, if, any, if you're gonna listen to anybody you should listen to me, especially somebody who owns pretty much a lot of Sony cameras. So here we go. Look, let me show you something. So I have about four or five cameras from Sony, including the ZV-E10 that stays in my, in my uh, studio, right? But listen, look, this is the Sony A1. This is the Sony A7S3. This is the Sony A7 IV. And this is the Sony A7R5. It's, you see all these cameras? This ain't no joke. This is what I do. So, let me tell you about using the ZV-E1 with all four of the big boys from Sony. Here's the ZV-E1. So, as you can see, just so you guys be like, oh, that wasn't, he didn't, you didn't really have it, and stuff like that. You should know I have it if I got all those other cameras, right? So, brand new. Here it is right here, ZV-E1. All right, it's already packaged up because it's about to go. All right, so here's the thing about the ZV-E1. One of the biggest things, I don't do a lot like the, a lot of other content creators. A lot of you guys out there shoot in 4K, 24. Um, you guys love that cinematic look and all that stuff. I don't mind, like a lot of my videos are shot in 4K, 24. And if you haven't saw on the screen, I am shooting this on the uh, Osmo Pocket 3 with the you know, DJI mic, just because I haven't really used it and I really, really love it. So guess what? I'm gonna just film this whole rant in on my uh, DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This is being shot with D-Log and I'm um, got an ND filter, one stop uh, in uh, 4K60, all right? So anyway, that's that what I'm filming on. Um, so anyway, the ZV-E1, I think is a, is a good camera, all right? One of the biggest things, I wanted to have it, every, a lot of people are gonna ask, why did you buy the ZV-E1 if you have so many other cameras? Here's the thing, my A7R5 and my A1, those are really my main portrait cameras, all right? So anytime you see me on location, I'm either using the A1 or the A7R5. My A7S3 is used to record my whole entire BTS for my, you know, all my photo shoots and everything. So it stays pretty much on a gimbal. That's why it's already mounted for the gimbal right now because I normally rarely take it off. It's set up, it's good to go. I don't have to touch it. When it's time to go to a photo shoot, it, I pick it up right off the gimbal and it goes. So my A7S3 stays on on gimbal ready for a photo shoot. My A7 IV is the one that I have been using. If you've seen any of my talking heads in studio, they've all been recorded on my A7 IV. But the problem with the A7 IV is I've never had an overeating issue. I love it. I love using it as a webcam. I love using it when I do um, my podcast and things like that um, because it, it makes for a great webcam. Well, anytime I do lives, YouTube live, um, I'm using my A7 IV. Um, any talking heads in my studio, I'm using my A7 IV. The problem with it, and it's never overheated, nothing. The problem with the A7 IV is I have to crop in when I do 4K60, and I like using a full frame camera, I'm sorry, a full frame lens on my A7 IV, but when I want to shoot 4K60, I have to, I have to crop in, I have to redo everything. I don't care what you say. I like shooting in 4K60. Pretty much everything that I do is being shot in 4K60. So I have a ton of lenses. Could I get a, a smaller lens? Could I put, no, because even when you put it in crop mode, you are essentially getting a different uh, f-stop and you're getting a different focal length. And I don't think, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I just want to shoot without it being cropped, all right? So I could put my A7S III, I can mount it, take it off. I can use my A1, which is fascinating in video. I can mount it, take it off, mount it, take it off. 
um, but I wanted to have a video camera that was only dedicated for video. I mean, it, for my studio. So when I come in, I can just tell Alexa to turn on all my stuff like she always does, and I'm ready to record. Not to mention the Ace, the a ZVE1 is better, of course, in low light, and honestly, it has a better video picture um, than the A7 IV. That's not a secret. I'm telling you that right now. If you don't know, the ZVE1 has a better picture and better quality, low light, all of those things than the A7 IV, okay? Um, the thing about it is, is the ZVE1 has a real overheating problem, all right? It gets hot and it tends to overheat. If you film in 4K60, I'll probably only be able to get to about 15, 17 minutes or so of 4K60 before it even overheats. You try to record in 4K uh, 120, oh, stand by. That's like five minutes, all right? I I don't like that. Now, can I record in 4K24? Yeah, I could. Could I record in 4K30? Yeah, I could. Could I turn off the Bluetooth um, so it's not connected to anything? Like, I know all these things already. I have other cameras. I don't wanna do that. Not to mention, one of the biggest things with the ZV-E1 that is really different from my other cameras is the setup. I can, I can use this camera, I've been using this camera, I don't mind you know, getting around and making sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. But there's a lot of things that I'm missing on this thing that I have from all four of these other cameras. All of these cameras have an EVF, all of these cameras have a lot of custom buttons. They're all set up the exact same way on the camera. So regardless if I go from the a7 IV to the a7S III to the A1 to the a7R5, I can literally set them all up the same because they're all pretty much the exact same. The ZV-E1, this is complete, this is almost completely different than the rest of my cameras. And it takes a little bit more fondling around, like your C2 is like this, and you know, you got the defocus button, and everything is in all different areas. Now for me, like I love redundancy, not to say that this is a bad camera, but for my workflow and what I do, I want to be able to go through my cameras, all my cameras, and just go from one to one to one. I don't wanna have to fumble. I don't wanna have to, you know, be like, oh shoot, this is in the wrong place. Oh, uh, yeah, this is exposure. This is, uh, you know, defocus. This is a product showcase. This is, you know, oh, this don't have, and this only one car side. It, it's just a lot of stuff on here. Like if you're so used to having all these cameras and they're all set up the exact same way, it's really hard to allow other, it's really hard to get used to other things. Like these four cameras, I know like the back of my head, I can tell you every menu system and where everything is in all four of these cameras. Um, but this is totally different. Um, this is also the reason why I never got the FX30 or I never got the FX3. Even though the A7S III and the FX3 is the exact same camera, exact same camera, you're not gonna get better video quality out of one as you are out of the other one. They have the exact same sensor. But the FX3 has just a few more cinema features. But my A7S III is set up the exact same way as my A7 IV, my A1, my A7R5. They're all the same. And it has a viewfinder. If you don't have a viewfinder, then yeah, you don't really care about a viewfinder, yeah. But for somebody who actually uses the viewfinder on all these cameras, I like using the viewfinder, even if I have it for video. So it's important to me. Um, but the reason why I got the A, the reason why I got the ZVE1, because I wanted to put it in the studio, I wanted to leave it there, and just do my thing. I, and it has no crop in 4K, whatever, whatever. And then I downloaded the 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 license to get the 4K 120. Um, but the camera is the camera is not a bad camera. But for me, there's just too many restrictions that I do not like on this camera. I don't like not having the redundancy um, in the car slot and not even being able to use CFast Express A. I use CFast Express A on all my other cameras and I've invested a lot in a lot of CFast Express A. I know they record faster in a lot of different things. I like it, all my cameras use CFast Express A. Um, I don't like the fact that uh, I don't have the custom buttons and I can't set it up the same way as my other cameras. My A, my um, auto white balance and my, my um, picture profile and a lot of different things. I don't like that I can't set it up the exact same way. Um, 
I don't like the fact that it overheats. The fact that it even gets hot, I, I just don't like it. I don't like the fact that it has a micro USB. I don't like, all my other cameras are all full HDMI. So I literally have to find a micro, I'm now thank God I had one already. But there is a lot of things with this camera. So if you're thinking about picking up the ZV-E1, understand that depending on what you shoot, it is going to be a restriction. You're going to have to check on it. I don't like it. I don't care if you have high temp on. I don't care what y'all say in the comments because I've already did. I've turned off everything. I turn on high temp. It gets hot. Now, if you're recording 4K24, you're fine. Great. whoop de doo You're fine. You're restricted to 4K24, 4K30. But trying to shoot in HS, trying to shoot in um, S, trying to shoot in um, all intro, like a lot of those different things. I don't like the fact that you have this camera for $2,000, but you are restricted on a lot of things that you can do because it overheats and just different things. I just don't like it. Um, so yeah, this is definitely going back to the store today um, and I'm getting my money back. Um, I think for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my A1 as my video camera for the studio and I'm gonna keep my A1 in my studio and just shoot with my um, A7R5. Um, and my a7 IV for my backup because I love them. I love the screens on the articulating screen And of course the a7 IV makes for an amazing hybrid camera Actually all the cameras make for an amazing hybrid cameras until we hear from Sony what's coming down the pipeline like either the a7 S4 or the um, FX3 mark II. that's the probably the only time that I am going to get another camera right now because I'm really interested in that what they're going to do because my 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 goal what I really want Sony to do is add in first of all none of our cameras have false color and I shoot an S log three a lot just like a hundred of you guys out there but I, I need to I, I can't wait till they add false color if they fought they add in false color to any, any camera I'm going to love it because I need that um, that feature uh, I, I am definitely probably going to pick up, if they come out the FX3 Mark II, I'm going to get it because I, hopefully it's going to have the 6K, it's going to have open gate, it's going to have, um, you know, internal raw, it's going to have a lot of different things and hopefully it's going to have false color, whether it be the A7S4 or the FX3 Mark II. Um, we hear about, you know, them dismantling the A7 series and FS line. Listen, I don't care which one they come out with. I'm going to get it. And it's going to be my main on location um, camera. And I'm also getting to more cinematography stuff also, which is why I want a more cinema like field camera, which is why I was also thinking about going to the R5C because R5C is absolutely incredible. And it has false color and it has internal raw AK. 30 and 60 and all of that stuff like the r5c right now is a beast now the only thing about it is the battery life it don't other overheat but don't think about it as a battery life but if i had to put my finger on a like one of the best video cameras right now full frame stuff I, i've looked at the the lumix s5 2x i've looked at the r5c i looked at a lot of those cameras right now if i had to put my finger on it i believe the r5c is probably top right now um that combined with like the 50 millimeter 1.2 or something because those cinema features they gave that thing so many cinema features and it shoots the internal raw ak 30 and 60 and all of those things like false color like it is amazing but again don't want to have to relearn the whole menu type system and stuff so even though i've shot canon before plenty of times but anyway so yeah the the ZV-E1, it has to go back, man. It's, it's, it's definitely not for me. It might be for you. A lot of y'all might be like, oh, this is the best camera. This is a vloggers and YouTuber. This is made for content creators. Um, you know, you have the, the auto framing. You have the, you know, product showcase. All of those things are great. But, <laughs> but if you use this thing, they're not i don't i don't think everybody is telling you everything about this camera and the issues that it has and overheating is a big thing again now if you shoot 4k 24 4k 30 you, you're great but i want to use it for 4k 60 i want to use it for 4k one i want to use it for a lot of things mainly 4k 60 and all my cameras are set up to 4k 60. i like everything in 4k this is not a 4k 60 camera this is definitely not a 4k 120 camera 4k 60 10 minutes 15 minutes you're going to overheat 
and it's cold outside. You see, I got on a sweater. It's not hot at all. The room temperatures are great. Everything is great. This is just definitely not the camera for me. So don't believe everything that you guys hear. Definitely get it. And I didn't want to hear, I didn't want to believe everybody. I, I, I didn't care about what everybody was saying. I wanted to get it, try it for myself, put it in my studio, see how it worked out, see, see if I could, you know, like it, get used to it, see if it could fit in with the big boys over here. Um, but no, it definitely don't. It not for me, man. I, absolutely not. I would rather use one of my other cameras or even go back to my a7 IV and just shoot in 4K 30 before I use this camera. Nah, too many restrictions. And none, guess what? None of my other cameras overheat. I've never had an overheating issue with none of my cameras. None of them. Yeah, it sucks. All right, that's my rent. Time to take this boy back. Hope I help somebody out there just being real. See y'all later. Let's take it back. Peace.